uh, that are related to, to transparency, globality, probably the uh, interoperability is more related to this to this one, uh, market-led, customer-oriented and market development, but also the government, governmental standards that uh, probably are mandatory in all the cases, like quality, safety, uh, ethical issues, security, CRS, CSR, and environmental care. We already talked about this, uh, some of them this morning, so I won't go deeply. Um, uh, within BP7, uh, we try to identify the use of the standards and best practices by by different companies, especially specifically by SMEs, uh, who are develop, de developing uh, new technologies in robotics, and also the gaps that they can uh, face in their daily uh, development. Uh, for this purpose, we have done some interviews at the beginning of the project. Uh, 43 interviews were carried out with uh, the following distribution by organization types. As you can see, uh, 14 SMEs participated on, on the interviews, but also we have uh, some people from the university or other size of companies. And they... Sorry. They were from different countries uh, along Europe. Uh, from these uh, interviews that we did at the beginning of the project, uh, we published a, a database in the DH Hero website with uh, the information of, of different standards that are already used by the companies. And this uh, database can be found right now in in the services, in the services part <laughs> that of the things of the website, and here you can use this button to see all the database that can be sorted by different topics or countries. And right now we are working on improving the database and organizing, the, organizing a bit more the collected information. Um, on the other side, uh, during last years, we have uh, organized brainstorming, interviews, webinars, some workshops and surveys with, uh, with companies in this industry and also with several experts. Uh, as I already said, the, the idea was to identify the difficulties faced by, by the companies and also the standards and best practices that are usually used by them. We have divided the topics in three groups that uh, Michael already mentioned this morning that are interoperability, human machine interaction and software development. But we also saw that uh, there is a very huge <laughs> A relationship among three of them. Um, other activity that we have carried out in this project, uh, in this VP specifically, is the connection between different European projects. I think that some of them have also already been mentioned this morning, like uh, Eurobench or Rosin, Cover. Uh, and yeah, and we are also linking them with uh, tactility as today or, or rehive this Friday. Uh, we also did a document with a collection of um, uh, software development best practices. Uh, this uh, document uh, include some information regarding the, the version control and issue tracking, the tagging, CICD, code testing, and some information also about the, the norm and the standard that is applicable for the software development. Uh, we expect to have this uh, document available in our, web, our website uh, in the following months. I, Unfortunately, it's not yet there, but it will be public, so we can inform you if you are interested in in getting this, this document. 
On the other side, we also had develop, uh, developed two tools. Uh, one is uh, regarding the, the ethical and legal approval needed for uh, any experimentation of the technology with uh, humans. Uh, we have already talked also about the clinical trials, uh, that they are really important, specifically now in the new regulation of medical devices. And uh, using this uh, guide that is based on, on a simple questionnaire, like with questions and answers of yes, no, and so on, you can get uh, some information about the path you need to follow for getting the, the ethical and legal approvals to carry out the clinical trial. Uh, so more or less, this is the <laughs> how it looks. Uh, as I said, it's based on a questionnaire uh, with some questions and easy, easy answers. And at the end, uh, you can get different information also regarding the country because uh, we saw that there are some different, some uh, small differences between uh, some countries. Right now, we only have information from Denmark, Germany, Poland, Spain, and Switzerland, Switzerland and United Kingdom. Sorry, uh, because uh, those are the partners uh, from the project that had uh, contributed to to this tool. And uh, in the last answer. Uh, you can get uh, a link to the information of the corresponding ethical committee or authority that uh, has to approve the, the trial. On the other side, uh, another tool for the safety issues that could be applied to the, to the robotic system has been built. Um, this uh, tool uh, it's not only for uh, robotics on healthcare, but also for the robotic robots that can be considered as industrial ones. And it's also based on a, on a simple questionnaire. And at the end, uh, gives you an overview of the different standards that can apply, apply to, to your system. Uh, here we can see the the main uh, page of the questionnaire and depending on the type of the robot you want to build, you can get, as you can see here, a list of uh, different uh, standards that can be applied and also um, an evaluation of the type of the class of that system. Uh, th those tools can be also found right now in the DH Hero uh, website on services tab <laughs> again, but uh, you can see a couple of buttons at the end of the website of the page to uh, use one, uh, the ethics or the, the safety guide. And uh, right now we have launched a survey on software development and interoper interoperability best practices. Uh, we have we have got some answers, and today I will present you the information we have right now on the questionnaire. But uh, it is still open. You can access it uh, using the QR or the link. Um, it was also published on some social networks, but. Uh, the last uh, results of this uh, questionnaire will be presented on, on the European Robotics Forum on, on the 29th of June, where we are leading a workshop uh, on this topic. So to do this session, I'm a bit interactive with the audience today. I have also prepared a, prepared a survey, an online survey for today. Uh, you can uh, enter on it uh, using this keyword or going to menti.com and using this number it will be all the time here present also and uh, i hope to, you can enjoy it <laughs> a bit also i will wait a bit okay um yes you you can enter with the phone or with your laptop so to start a bit on, on the work to be done, 
uh, I will launch the first question that is uh, regarding the type of in institution you are working for. And I will give you some time to answer. <laughs> and you can see there the, the answers from, from you in real time. <laughs> Can you go to the previous one? Uh, no. <laughs> you can enter on menti.com and use this code. Yeah. It's exactly okay. the same. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I will open it again. For you. It's been the same as me. But we have six answers, not too much, but uh, <laughs> We can see that uh, we have a couple of people from not for profit and, and then one company, one research center, university, and government. There is some body. overlap because I put government body, but I know if I'm behind this position, it's going body or it's no CEO <laughs> or it's no profit. No it's idea. <laughs> And uh, I will I will ask you about also the, the country where the institution is located. Probably Spain will <laughs> win the same. The <laughs> time. <laughs> Two, <laughs> very much. Okay, I think that we don't have uh, more people around. Uh, well, in the question that I, in the survey that I, that I told you that uh, we launched last, last month, uh, we got only uh, eight answers from now on, but uh, we are expecting more. So please <laughs> join the question if you are interested on that. And uh, for the moment, we have uh, three medium-sized company and, and two research centers on the other side, a bit different. And also got uh, some information from different countries. Okay, uh, so next, <laughs> we have the next question regarding the use of the uh, standards. We made a, a quite large, <laughs> a list of different standards related to quality and we are interested in knowing which are known, used. So you can select more than one if you want. <laughs> it's closer. <laughs> Are you done? Or? Okay, so others is the winner. <laughs> I can see that uh, the 13, 4, 8, 2, and 9,000, as usual, <laughs> are the most usual. On the questionnaire, we can see also that uh, the 9,000 is the most known one, for sure, and, and the one that uh, the companies are using. And uh, yeah, then the second one could be so the the one related to to quality management of, for medical devices that so cyber society told us that they are also using. So now regarding the software development, we also found it uh, found different uh, standards to be used, and we also want to know if uh, companies are using any of them or, or depends on the ones that we have found. Mm. 
Okay, we can see that there is some people that doesn't develop software. <laughs> or no one is used. Okay, internal SOP, SOPs also and the 62304. <laughs> the, yeah, the, the internal SOP is usual to, to have and we are also interested in, in knowing if uh, other companies are applying specific things on the companies um, and we have uh, we are organizing some interviews with the companies regarding the uh, to, to discuss about those internal SOPs. Uh, yeah, on the questionnaire, uh, the most used one is the the 2701 related to information security man management. But also we can see that uh, some people is using the 29110 family or the 62304 that uh, probably is well known. Also. Uh, regarding the development, uh, we are also trying to know uh, which tasks are more complex to the developers. So we did a, a list of uh, different tasks. And uh, so please go on, tell us which is more difficult for you to face or to handle in everyday work. <laughs> okay, we can see that um, usually the validation or testing or the documentation are the, the task that the developers uh, need more time to handle. But always implementation is not considered as the, the most difficult task. And we can see the same on, on the questionnaire with the answers that we have got during this, this month. It's curious. But impl implementation is the thing that uh, the technical people likes more <laughs> or seems to. Uh, we are also regarding the interoperability we are also asking to people if uh, they connect different type of uh, systems we have divided on into software and hardware and sometimes we need to to connect with uh, the software from other institutions or or with the hardware of, of others and this makes our system more complex So we can see that most of the people are connecting software together with the hardware, but uh, yeah, the other kind of systems also between two hardwares or two softwares is also quite usual. And here the interoperability is really, really important. How to organize this uh, connection uh, and the standards needed for that. Uh, and uh, regarding the, the interoperability, we found also several standards, recommendations, and so on. So we would like to know if someone is using any of them. You have a list there. Okay, we can we can see that uh, probably interoperability is not so established on the standards on that uh, as it's uh, the quality or the safety. And uh, yeah, we don't know how to manage <laughs> or or we have some internal SOPs for that. Uh, and, and 
probably this this kind of list could be also useful for the companies that are working on that. Uh, on the questionnaire, well, uh, we have more or less the same results on, on the type of the systems that we are connecting together as uh, here today. But uh, yeah, regarding how to connect them, the standards to be used, uh, well, it's, it's also similar or, or no one or we don't know uh, how to manage it and probably this topic could be something where we can help somehow looking for new standards or, or uh, defining some best practices on that. So that's all from my side. Probably it's really short. <laughs> I, I expect it to, to take some additional time. But uh, yeah, more or less this is the work that we are doing right now in on the hero trying to look for the gaps or the problems that companies are facing and how others can manage the interoperability software de development and, and standards applic applicability to help the others so yeah, i don't know if you I have any questions this uh, question to all the people on the by bih here yeah why have you ever seen so less so or few references? Don't know. <laughs> we will try make it, make it, uh, we will try with your bench, and we will see if you are uh, a tougher uh, boss than you. Just ask. Uh, <laughs> you have to do to receive the next <laughs> payment. <laughs> payment. Yeah, we are looking the for the final report before the final report. Yeah, we are trying to push a bit for, for getting more answers. I think that it could be also interesting for others to know where, which is more used or not, because probably they can also apply that if uh, the companies are using the same. But uh, yeah, at this moment, we are getting very few answers. We can have promoting also, a bit. Yeah, so you can send the, the link to us or there, and we can send that to, to our so. Yeah, 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 sure. If you yeah. can promote, disseminate it, would be great. It's only five minutes of, <laughs> of questionnaire. There's another association called MedTech Europe. It's part of the um, IMI PPP. And the people there, this medical device is not specifically robotics, uh, but it might be worth circulating the link to them as well and ask them for their members to, to circulate to their members. So the software development concerns will be the same mm -hmm. for that community as well. And it'd be interesting to see if they're more advanced or there's other other standards that need to come out. Would be great. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Another thing that may I don't know, maybe you can tag anything uh, now, but some open answers also could be nice to have because sometimes you select others, but then they cannot specify yeah. what others is or just text box at the end if people want to say something they can so yeah for sure uh, here i only brought the the close questions because uh it's quite difficult to do it with the audience in real time ah, okay. but on the so questionnaire yeah on the questionnaire you have the the option to add the, some information regarding the others mm -hmm. which kind of uh, standards you are uh, using and we have also a couple of questions regarding the other kind of tools that you can explain if uh, we are getting also some information regarding Git or CCD tools that they are using for, for the software development and so on. But it was a bit difficult to manage for today, but uh, yeah, mm -hmm. you, you can find that on the questionnaire. But uh, any other improvement is also good. <laughs> sure. Yeah, we try to do also some close questions with a list of uh, standards just to give uh, this list to the participants uh, because we felt that probably it could be interesting also to see all the standards that we have uh, already found for quality or software development because some of them probably are not very known but uh, you can look for that with the number and also to make the the questionnaire easier for to be answered. So we, if we have enough answers, we would like to publish at the end these uh, results if it's useful for developers uh, 
you know, will be on in the website or we can share it with the people who is interested on that. Any question? <laughs> Okay, so thanks for participating on, on our survey. I will take the, the data also to include it in our work. So these are not included out of No, the... no, no, no. You, no, no. you could see. Different. Yeah, they were from the questionnaire, so I can merge everything now. Thanks a lot. <laughs> so nothing from my side. <laughs>